second thing we did was working around elections. For those who know Kenya, 2007 elections was not an interesting scenario. Mm. And Africa is increasingly getting that way. Elections are becoming increasingly violent. So for us, it became interesting how to then begin to build platforms around data that can create transparency and accountability around elections. This was something that we just built and we brought that history. Uh, but as part of that a story, we, 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 a couple of things started emerging. But uh, citizens, were, especially around the conversation of elections, are talking about improvement of governments but and responsive to citizens. And that is why in the morning I was critical about aid, because is that aid really responsive to the needs of citizens? Do we have data from that other side that can be able to layer to actually mesh up and say the aid that is being given, was there really a conversation with citizens or was there enough evidence to say that we really need that kind of aid? Uh, the, the notion of services, services are expanded, but issues of quality and accountability. Uh, it's something that we've been seeing as citizens have been increasingly demanded. It's not about the hospital. Is the hospital working? Does it have the right quality of doctors? Does it have the right medicines? Is it generic? Is it is it counterfeit? Is mm. it is it is it original? So there are a lot of conversations that are there. Third is citizens are not interested in that stuff. If you provide them three hundred million was provided for water, they're not interested in that. They're interested in a thousand shillings. I, I buy twenty shillings or or my bill is about one euro a month from, for water that comes to my house. So they're really interested in the retail stuff. And if we can connect the larger issues of the and the macro and the micro issues then it becomes important. The information is essential to citizen action. We realize that as kids are growing the three circles that uh, citizens are increasingly becoming aware. And because they're educated they know evidence is part of change. So how do you how do you use that evidence in every ways that can do that? A fourth dilemma that we realize as we are continuing is young people. Kenya is about 60 to 65 percent young. We are young population. We just can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, increasingly in Africa, that is the case. In North Africa, it's 50, 60 percent. You see what happened in the Facebook revolution, the Twitter revolution, per se. But the continent is increasingly becoming young. So these young people require very different ways of engagement. Our usual way of NGOs engaging with them, whether, whether using data or all formats of data, doesn't really work in most cases. So, how do we effectively use the tools and platforms that we're familiar with? NGOs as a critical perspective, always working, workshops, seminars, young people don't come to those spaces. People have shaped, shapes are becoming busy. How do we do that? So we found that also it's interesting to see how data can be part of that. So we did uh, an election monitoring platform, we the partnerships, the red patch. Red patch is government. For the first time, simply having a platform with good data, with good quality graphics, with good quality partnerships, we're able to bring a government agency. That platform is a government is is, is, is a government led platform and piece of and piece of engineers. And based on the platform we're able to bring them into a space, which they are simply part of our they're not even leading, it's not the leading organizations. They are not even there, they are simply a contributor to that. And and you are quite it was quite awesome because they contributed a lot of data, a lot of election data, a lot of location-based information, a lot of contact information for responses in case of violence. So that was that we found was interesting, which did not exist before. And that is why before the presentation I was mentioning in, in, in spaces where there's really no data, what do you do? Uh, you need to curate it. And that is why we are actually excited about uh, the, the standards composition that are coming. So that is what just basically happens using the data and, and using very good information. Uh, citizens were able to amplify their voices to observers. Observers were able to put the data in a way that government could act and respond to. The media were able to report on elections very differently. For those who followed the Kenya elections last year, you would actually know. And, and we've, we've had conversations with media practitioners that the coverage was very different, simply based on, on data and the information that was provided. Uh, and that was simply the sort of engine that was used for you who are familiar with Shahidi, that was the engine that we used, but just tweaked it a bit uh, for, for the elections. Part of that you can actually see there was a lot of data issues there, there was observer there, data and government data that were meshed up to provide. Yeah. And then visualize, of course, on a map, a timeline, SMSs were able to be. Uh, 
people are able to subscribe, uh, we're able to send to feedback for the government, uh, which is the, the Independent Electoral Commission, and then the Peace Monitoring Platform that I mentioned. Uh, interesting. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, you actually have, for example, that is a group of the IHAB. You've had the IHAB a lot. Uh, the IHAB was able to, we were able to produce between four and five reports, quite visualized very fast uh, in the day. So you have the, you, then the IHAB fellows were able to send those visualized reports to the election observers, and there were almost three to four press conferences every day. Very good data, very well visualized. And for the first time, we actually have a historical account of Kenyan elections. We've dared everybody, including researchers. If you can find anything, let us know. Mm -hmm. The 2007 one, nobody can find it. That is interesting. For us, we thought it was interesting because we're in Netherlands, so we can as well mention it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a case going on uh, mm -hmm. for, for, for certain Kenyan politicians. But it's interesting how all that data disappeared for 2007 elections. For 2010, we actually have it. Anybody can download it and use it. So we think for 2012, this sort of open way of working could actually be a deterrent for anybody who thinks they can simply just uh, carry on with impunity and, and not be held to account. That is, a, that is another way, for example, if you engage citizens and organizations, how your data could be, how feedback could be important. This other side was feedback from citizens. That side, it doesn't have locations, so or it doesn't have any pictorial thing of locations. This other side is election observer, NGO pass. They know how to take these photos. So imagine how this could help in terms of aid transparency. Or you have a citizen taking a photo, a very well-trained organization person getting very good sort of a photo of that, and then having that amplifier. The case and point for this was uh, elections is just one day. So this came in at about uh, 10, 10 a.m., 10-ish. By the time this was amplified to the government and the electoral commission, they were all pulled down in about an hour. So it, it, tells you, it tells you how that works. So for us, we thought this was some of the case studies that become very interesting. Uh, issues of incentives, do people respond? Yes, people responded in Kenya. Does government respond? Even on a platform that has very good data and very good visualization, yes. That is 640 actual reports were responded to. Do, do citizens send, can citizens actually send information? The other category, which was half of the reports that came, citizens were just sending more stuff, everything is fine, and that is layered also on part of the, the data set. And it's not free. Sorry? It's not free. Yeah, it's not free. They actually pay for it. No one is in this course. Tanzania was 6,000, Uganda was 40,000, but we had difficulties. <laughs> I think Kenya is here. There's a lot of difficulties in Uganda. Uh, so where we heading to and beyond, I think for us we think, for example, we have for 2012 suddenly have been called upon to develop this platform for the entire election observation group in Kenya. So it shows we are actually in a position where we can define uh, what needs to be curated, the formats and all that. So all the tech, all the tech stuff has been laid for Southern Amishani. The other organizations and international observers and the electoral commission are coming together for that. We, uh, data has been released by the Electoral Boundary Commission and the, election, uh, and the election observation team and the, and the government. We have shared files, we have the voters register, we have mobile phone coverage, so all that data we have. So they, and, and that is why I guess I'm going to say, sometimes governments simply do not know what to do. So when you have an opportunity like that, it becomes very interesting now between citizens and civil society in conversation with the government and actually be able to shape uh, open data and open data standards. September 2011, which I don't see the is up, but what you'll get is data for the last election. If you look at it in two months, you'll actually have a newly improved uh, version of the platform.